JavaScriptShare.org. Today I am going to talk about a real world scenario where the router is down and once the router is down um, you what's the process of getting a new one and uh, how this this whole process works so in the beginning I'm going to talk about it because of course this is a learning video for you to understand what I'm doing here first and you could be doing the same thing on your job so in my scenario we have two connections uh, one is from AT&T and one is from another company this is a fast connection this is a little slow connection so in my case what happened is that this router went down something is wrong with it but of course we have a second con uh, first connection which is the main connection everything is working fine now if this connection goes down then this is a major issue we have we have a critical issue then but at this point since this is working it's not critical but this needs to be uh, fix quickly because in case this goes down at least we'll have an internet connection so the issue is that we have router which is a Cisco router uh, for 300 and that's mainly used for uh, gateway or uh, you know your main connections powerful routers uh, so basically it's down the what's happening to the router is that it will boot but then you will have ember light blinking this means that it's going to either this mode when you start the router you'll probably see something like like this uh, this means that it's either having an issue with uh, the its image or it could be an issue with some other uh, running config file that's kinda like you know in Windows you have operating systems this is kinda like related to that but sometimes uh, it could be more than that uh, in my case um, the console cable uh, is a mini B cable and when you plug that in it's not working it's basically not connected to the router but if I get the same router and connect the same cable it's working so I know the cable is correct the configuration is correct because these are the same identical routers but this one is not working so something is not right and there's no reset button on these so you can just do a factory reset uh, as far as I don't know I'm not a Cisco guy so at this point this is all I got I send the email to the Cisco uh, troubleshooting team um, and they will basically call and ask for the serial number of the router you'll give the serial number from the back of the router and then they will say okay you have warranty we'll send you the router in one night shipping so you'll get it in the morning and then you have 10 days to return this router so that is the whole uh, process what I'm doing right now and now what we need to do is since it's not only it first of all how did I know that this router is down so now the learning piece in this is that you need to monitor some kind of tools you need to use to monitor this router so it's pinging or whatever you use ICMP whatever and you could use that tool and then it will send you an email that this router cannot be accessible anymore so check it out uh, so that's something the learning key for you go to Google learn say how do you monitor switching routers you will find a lot of ideas and tools and then that's one learning for you another is that how did even this router got set up that's a whole different story this requires a Cisco level learning CCNA Cisco routing switching you need to learn that so make sure that's a learning point for you right there um, now since it's down what do we do at work to get it up and running again of course you need to get the router from them so they will send a router to you with a power cable right here this is the power they don't get you the other side but this is what you have you have some instructions right here and remember the old router that's right there needs to get back into this box and we will return it in 10 days all right so let's talk about the issue you see right here there's no lights uh, this is a console cable remember I was talking about it's a different console cable It's a mini B cable I'll show you the cable in a second right here this is the different cable remember it's different than your normal old type of console cable it has five pins in it if you see that has a five pin probably you can see that but that needs to be five pins to get into that to get to your laptop Cisco environment these lights can be everything make sure you look at the lights and then you go to the manual and then you see okay why is it blinking amber lights you see there's three green power is okay temperature is okay fan is okay state is blinking orange light it's keep blinking or amber so make sure you go to the Cisco and same router and look for the manual and see what this describes.
going back to the manual is very important because you go to the Cisco site you look for the routers and see what what these lights represent it could be two orange light uh, like that so that mean maybe the power was having an issue so you don't even have to uh, get the whole router maybe you could have just got the uh, the power plug behind and change that and that would have fixed the issue um, so those manual from Cisco you just type the 4300 troubleshooting and you will see the whole list from them and make sure you do that because without it you will spend so much time and you still probably won't figure out the issue in this case uh, the issue is that we have a laptop uh, that I need to connect to this uh, router and I'm not able to do the console also so this means I'm stuck I talk to the Cisco guys and they say well you know what we'll just send you a new one because at this point you can't do anything one part and try to understand more in the real world scenarios this is the router right here 4300 series this is a power cable and I need to plug it in and turn it on this is a fresh router there's no configuration remember this router was down before so here's the little bit learning piece so now this is down and in in a real environment somebody's backing up this router it's it's probably to me it's going to be crazy if someone don't back up these routers so who are these someone people maybe you're working for a company and you're the guy only IT person and now you're managing this stuff so when you take this job make sure that routers make sure you ask someone that where the routers are backed up where are these configuration files if you are responsible for this kind of stuff now in my case I work for a little bit medium type of enterprise you know area where I don't back up this stuff this is not my area but I can definitely understand this whole stuff but there's another company that works with us to do all the Cisco stuff so that's another really cool thing that if you have a other company working they're responsible for backing this up and everything and now my job is to set this router up get the connection to this laptop this router and have them connect to this laptop and then take care of it that's it once this everything is done I'm just gonna pick this router up replace it with this router and we're good to go okay then that's their headache they will need to log in and figure things out and if things are not working but if you were the person to fix this stuff get everything so what you would be doing right now I'm not gonna show you that because this is a production environment and I'm not gonna play around with this stuff like that so what you need to do basically you need to uh, back up this router you should have a running config file which is running just like an operating system you have all the information in there you imaging you have done every single stuff in there you have everything in that running config file and then basically you need to use some kind of server usually it's a TFTP server and um, the, the application that I'm using have that ability and you need to somehow once you connect to it you need to get the configuration file from uh, from this router when you have the backup from the backup system you need to put it in this new router the new router right here and then replace everything start the router everything should be come, coming back as it is but in my case I'm gonna set it up so once every all the access from this router from this machine when people have access they can get to this router they will get all the configuration file back to this router we will put it back and then everything should be back up again to connect the router with this laptop and then after that it's basically what I explained I am going to give access to the Cisco guys and they will log into this laptop configure everything back from the old configuration and then we'll just plug it back everything should work but to do this you need to go to this link which is really cool tool right here you can use putty but I really like this one so you go to mobile Xterm in Google search click on download I already downloaded it so you can click on download now and this portable edition once you download it then what you can do uh, basically you go to the download and this is where I extracted it so once you extract it double click on this personal you can get the professional if you want double click on that and this is what you will see right now so before opening this up again we'll need to close this and let's do the part where we need to connect the router remember this is a small mini B cable it even says right there if you guys can see it B very small so I'm gonna plug this in the USB to the computer and plug this uh, in the back of the router before doing this step I forgot to tell you guys that you need a USB driver a Cisco USB uh, driver now 
each, this is a very confusing part and you do, you need to do your research on this. Uh, for example, if I'm downloading a driver for Cisco 43000, what 300, so what you need to do is you go to Cisco site and of course this is something that is uh, only Cis only you, if you have a membership with Cisco then they will you can download this I'm not gonna tell you to go and download the other way so you have to go the correct way you go to the Cisco site and download the USB to console drivers once you download it run it and you should have it inside this laptop I have already did this step so make sure you don't get confused that oh you, you know you just connected it without a driver yes I went to Cisco I downloaded a driver and then it's, a, it's basically installer, you double click on it, you run it, and you have the driver inside this laptop. Then you do the USB part. So that's your laptop in the back, go ahead and plug this in. And the other side, which is a small side, goes to the router. And it should say console, make sure you don't play around with this too much, force it. It should just click in, don't force it, it will break it and that's it, it's useless. Then you get the power. Uh, for the router and that you go right here the white and that's also just click in then you just get the power plug it in there you go and now what we need to do is to turn on the router to turn on the router you have to do it from here in the back right there turn it on and just wait for about a few seconds you see right here is doing its post and right now it's this is uh, going to blink but it's fine this should still get the connection to the console so what we need to do is to go to open the mobile term and what we need to do is double click on this mobile term professional right click on the session go to serial in serial click on that and you see right here Cisco serial Remember, I did the download the driver part to confirm this. You can go to start, right click. If you're using PuTTY, then you're going to be using this first to see which COM are you using. Go to uh, device manager, in device manager, basically click on this right here, and you should see a Cisco serial COM3. This is important for your um, PuTTY type of other applications. So if you go to properties and you go to port settings, this is the settings that you need. To connect to this but in this application you don't need to do that everything is automated if you click on it click OK it creates a session and look at this initializing hardware this is the first time it's getting uh, basically connected there's no boot image for this so it's going to do its everything from scratch and this is where we need to uh, now get the connection uh, get, get the other company to connect to this laptop and then do their magic on this of course in my future videos I will show you this when we do more of a Cisco type of courses we will get to this but at this point as a system administrator or a help desk or anyone um, had this kind of situation you're probably done with this unless you're doing everything like I said that's a sad situation but you will learn something from that also so thank you for watching this video after this nothing from here they will log in they'll get the configuration in it and your job is done and then you need to plug, put this put it back into the rack and everything will be fine thank you for watching this video hope you guys learned something really cool because you don't get to see this in courses or classes or colleges you only see this in a real world environment thank you interested in how this thing is done basically remember in the beginning I said that you do need to have a configuration backup file with you or else this will not make any sense so you we have the file right here so this is all text all you have to do is to copy from the first line or you can name the router first it's up to you so you can basically open the the router like this it's gonna say do you want to configure this blah 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 say no because you want to give everything manual so it's gonna say no then you're gonna get to the config T which is a privilege mode you just need to change that because you need to do configuration so you need to do enable config T after that you can copy all of this stuff paste it right here and then once it's done make sure you do copy running config space startup hyphen config so both of have a hyphen running config hyphen startup config and then just click ok and it will say right here green ok and now when I reboot this router 
it's going to have all that information. So I'm not plugging into in a different IP address. I'm going to take it back to the, the router which have, was we are having issue. We're going to take this off, plug this back in there, and everything should be up like normal. And this is the ending. There you go. We got it working. And there you go. Both lights are up right now.